This is the normal uh, quarterly meeting of our security agencies within the country. And as usual, we discuss the current activities that affected most of the states in the Federation, like Taraba, uh, Zampara, and other states. We have seen deployment in Zampara. What are we expecting? Well, as usual, uh, we have is, uh, operationalized a division in Sokoto, and there will be a brigade in Katsina and another brigade in Zampara that will take care of the security uh, situation of that area. How do you think that is going to change the situation? Of course, because the number of, uh, I mean, the strength of the um, uh, military personnel have increased, including the Air Force additional uh, uh, quick response group. They have added enough manpower in that general area. About the Zankali, I can see the Kwanana Bada approval na asawo kayaki na yaki kusan 1 billion daya kun go gode nan Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, uh, we're turning attention now to security architecture. But yes, indeed, we could uh, start off with that $1 billion approval uh, for arms procurement by the president. We've got uh, Mr. Emmanuel Anyegbunam, who is a legal practitioner on my immediate right. And on my far right is Mr. Mikey Jaffer, former director with the SSA. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you so much. Let's start from the legal perspective. We do know that there's been an argument about this. People have said, uh, look, uh, because even as we've seen in some of the dailies, the way they reflect it, some say that the president did bypass National Assembly, some use the word shun National Assembly, and some have said, look, historically, has there ever been any clear directive, even though there's a case in court about this matter recently? So give us the benefit of hindsight, legally speaking. What is the right thing to do? Well, I think uh, we must accept one fact, that we are a constitutional democracy. And it is the constitution of the country that is supreme, and not any individual or any agency or institution. In that perspective, if you go to our constitution, section 80, you will see that it is power and control over public uh, funds. From section 80 to 83, you have that no fund should be expended or even appropriated without what? approval or by a manner prescribed by the National Assembly. It is clear. Section 81 takes on on what? Appropriation bill. Then in section 83, you will see contingencies covered. And contingency is covered by what? That even if the president goes on and gets this approval, it will come through what? A supplementary appropriation bill. Because like I said, it is the power of the post which constitutionally resides with the National Assembly. And it is in the context of good governance, accountability, transparency, rule of law, and participation. These are key pillars on which what every democratic institution stands. And we have tried one way or the other to deviate from these prescribed norms. And it has always led what into a very big problem and then cast as passion and doubt over most of these uh, uh, slogans of having what a corrective regime and acting in what due process and what accountability. So so far, the way it is, and if we go back even to the United States of America, that is the model of a democracy, the League of Nations was an international setting. Woodrow Wilson went and what accepted the. League of Nations, and came back and the Congress did what? The Congress reversed it. And that was why the entire world lost the League of Nations before we went back to what? United Nations. So we are supposed to learn what? The basic temperaments, culture, and norms of what? Democracy and keep to it. 
That is what this issue leads to. And that is what we are supposed to do. Now let's look at whether or not this fund, even though we'll come back to those legal angles, uh, the purpose for which these funds are for, um, how is this going to affect our fight against terrorism? I know uh, several comments have been made about whether or not this fund will actually go for the procurement of arms. The jury's out on that. But what do you think? Well, uh, I don't, uh, like I already said, I don't have a problem if any amount of money is approved for security. Because first of all, our security agencies are underfunded. But my worry in this very case, like uh, Barrister has said, is uh, you see, there's this existing first relationship between the National Assembly and uh, the executive. You recall that when the 36 governors gave a nod to this uh, one, it raised a lot of issues at the National Assembly, and uh, a lot of them raised objection to the uh, approval. But now, having sidelined the National Assembly to get this money approved, of course, you expect the National Assembly to react. That is my word. I have uh, also, we've also noted that uh, the issue of uh, purchase of arms, we are going the same route again, it's a deja vu. How? The same period money was approved in uh, 2014 for the previous government. And this present government is accusing the government of having diverted the money. We are still getting the same. No, do, do, does that mean that because they are proven it at the same period, does it automatically mean that the same things will happen to this fund? Not necessarily. Um, you see, there's a proverb in my place, uh, if I, I can translate it. They say that the, the living albino, witnessing the burial of uh, a dead albino, knows that how it's going to be treated when he dies. In those uh, days, in my place, when Abino dies, they use a charcoal to rub the face, so that when he reincarnates, he will not come back as an Abino. So what is happening now, I just feel and believe we have learned our lessons. If we have not learned any lessons, too bad. I also believe that I want to urge the government to audit and properly monitor the spending of this money that it is used for the purpose for which it is meant. Because we have crisis at hand. The previous government has been accused several of uh, diverting funds. So there must be mechanism put in place, apart from the problem that we're going to respect from the National Assembly, to ensure that the money is meant for what it is. You also recall that um, when President Goodluck Jonathan then applied for $1 billion loans, it was time to specific items where Belarus agreed, not in terms of money, to bring uh, 12 helicopters and there were items that have not seen the details of uh, this present release and what they intend to achieve. But we have just had they are going to be used to purchase uh, uh, equipment and uh, I do hope they will use the money for which it is done. But, but that's that bit of um, the approval. I mean, does it mean that when it comes to security issues, you don't seek approvals? Is that what it ought to be? No. You must seek approval. But you know, there are security rules. But this money is coming from an uh, excess crude account. Okay. Uh, well, we'll just go to break. But we'll come back and uh, continue in your line and train of thought. Don't go away. <laughs>